This is a video explaining what I have previously referred to as the hypertime shadows of orbital inconsistency. In the heliocentric model, we conceive of the Earth as being in orbit around the Sun. And we consider the Sun and the Earth separate entities, separate objects that are related only in their distance and the way that they move with respect to one another. In astrotometry, the physical matter on the Earth is understood to be inconsistent in time. In other words, it's understood to be a waveform that materializes and rematerializes in the moment. In other words, what the, what the Earth is, is composed of the things that come in from every other angle, from all around it. So the Earth is created by what, what surrounds it. That's the concept in astrotometry. And that the way that it moves through time, the way that it orbits, or appears to orbit the Sun, is related to an underlying mechanics of time itself. Now, in the modern understanding of this, there is a shadow that is left on the planets from the mechanics of light. In other words, light moves out from the sun and strikes the earth in the heliocentric model. And this is why we have day and night on the earth as the earth uh, rotates on its axis, tilted at 23 and a half degrees uh, from uh, with respect to the plane that it orbits uh, the Sun in. Now, in astrotometry, the light that's coming from the Sun is what is in question, is what is, what is brought to the table uh, as far as an understanding of how matter and energy are related. In other words, Einstein um, let us know that uh, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared. He, he knew that there was this relationship between matter and energy, a component relationship. In other words, that you could transfer, transform one into the other. Well, the energy component always has a time component to it because energy is related to its frequency. The amount of energy you have is related to time and so there's a time component that is bound into the concept of energy that also relates to matter, to mass. And so we have to consider what the persistence of matter actually is. How does matter actually persist in time? And how is the energy transformation relationship uh, actually composed on the, on the underlying level? And this is where astrotometry brings in uh, the concept of the common carrier. Now, the, in, in the modern concept of what is in outer space, we, we conceive that what is up there, the space between the Earth and the Sun, is empty. That's the modern concept, that it's empty space. But we know that it's full of energy. The Earth is commonly understood to have a north and a south electromagnetic field that surrounds the Earth and extends into space and the Sun has a, a, a similar uh, electromagnetic field that interacts with the Earth's field in the modern understanding. These fields are affected by the movement of particles on the Sun. We notice that there, there are changes in the Earth's magnetic field because of particle emissions that we see from the Sun. All of the theories about the construction of what is in outer space is based on the observations of light. And light is an electromagnetic wave. The, the magnetic component of light isn't really considered as we when we look at it. 
uh, from a distance. When we see when we see the light that's that's coming into the Earth from outer space, we don't usually consider the magnetic component of the electromagnetic wave. We generally model it conceptually the same way that we model light here on Earth, which is that it travels in a straight line as a ray. And we don't usually consider the possibility that it might actually curve like the electromagnetic field curves as it travels through space. And you know, if you if you could travel immediately from one place to another, there might be a discrepancy between uh, not just the, uh, the the amount of time it takes the light to travel, but the actual trajectory the light takes through space. We have to consider the possibility that there's some type of a curvature uh, to this path that we haven't yet assimilated into the model. That's that's the, that's one issue. Now another issue is that all of our observations are based on the actual mechanics of light, and so if there's something else happening underneath of the electromagnetic wave, if there's some type of movement underneath the electromagnetic wave movement, then we have to reconsider uh, our model. And that's what I've demonstrated with um, the hypertime shadows, is that there is a underlying mechanism to electromagnetism that can be sorted out by looking at things like the, the, the correlation between coronal holes and um, coronal mass ejections and the supersymmetric movement on the Earth of matter on the Earth with those features and the, the effects and correlations of those same features with the incoming sun grazing comets. And so there's a supersymmetry to the cosmos. And the comet, the incoming sun grazing comet, is, is a big key to understanding the nature of that symmetry. And so consider for a moment the Earth as being this thing that is created in the moment that is a waveform that is, is going out and coming back through this field. And so this field is, is going out and coming back in, at an incredible speed, at an incredible rate. And that that rate is the frequency of the energy. And so the energy itself is composed of the movement, of the undulation of the electromagnetic field. And that is the, that is the underlying force that creates the matter through time.